With Mick Jagger are William Rees Mogg, editor of the Times newspaper, Father Thomas Corbishley, a leading British Jesuit, Lord Stowe Hill, formerly Sir Frank Soskis, who has been Home Secretary and Attorney General, and Dr. John Robinson, Bishop of Woolwich and author of the controversial reassessment of Christianity, Honest to God. Mick Jagger has been silent for three months. He's read of people saying he's got what's coming to him, of a poll of young people in which 85% said his offence deserved a jail sentence, and he read the Times asking, who breaks a butterfly on a wheel? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, could I just ask you take your pictures as speedily as possible. I don't think we've been unreasonable by asking Mr. Jagger. Earlier, Mick Jagger talked briefly to a press conference after the Lord Chief Justice, Lord Parker, had quashed his three months prison sentence for possessing amphetamine tablets and substituted a 12 month conditional discharge. Lord Parker told Jagger, if you keep out of any trouble for the next 12 months, what has happened will not be on your record as a conviction. If you do commit another offence, you will not only be punished for that offence, but brought back and punished for this one. Lord Parker also said that whether he liked it or not, Jagger was the idol of a large number of young people. He had grave responsibilities. And if he committed a further offence, should expect a higher penalty because of his responsibilities. Keith Richard, the other Rolling Stone convicted with Jagger, left the appeal court free. The court quashed his conviction of permitting his house to be used for the smoking of hemp. And one more happy one for me. Okay, gentlemen, can we call it a day? Yeah. As an idol of many young people in this country today, you have a very grave responsibility. It's a grave view. How do you propose to exercise, exercise that now? Well, that's very difficult. One uh, perhaps doesn't ask for responsibilities. Perhaps one is given responsibilities when one is uh, uh, pushed into the limelight in, in, in this particular sphere rather than asking to be asked to be pushed into this and in a way I've really asked to be my private life to be uh, left alone so as it were so that my, res that my, my responsibilities as far as that goes are only to myself you know in, in the public sector such as to do with my work my records and etc I, uh, I have responsibility but in, in my private uh, the, the amount of baths I take or my personal habits are of no uh, consequence to anyone else, I don't think. Do you mean this that you were picked upon because you are who you are? I don't think we were picked, on, picked upon in that way, because but it's just that applies to everybody. And, and yeah. The responsibility only applies to us because of who we are. Oh, oh, who's going to make a film? Uh, I don't uh, propagate religious views such as some pop stars do. Hmm. I don't propagate drug views such as some pop stars do. This whole sort of thing was pushed upon me. By whom? But, well, by the mere fact that I was being prosecuted and also with Keith being prosecuted. We didn't make a, a public statement on religion, on drugs or anything like that. After the press conference, World in Action took Jagger by helicopter to the quiet location he asked for. There he talked about his attitude to the society he lives in with some of the people responsible for it. Nick, you've uh, had a difficult day and you've had a difficult three months, to put it mildly. And now you're sitting in this garden uh, with a bench full or a garden seat full of the establishment opposite you. Uh, rather like a Beerbohm cartoon. And uh, you obviously have a power to communicate to very large numbers of people, young people in Britain, United States as well, which we don't have. And therefore, what we'd like to do would be to discuss with you the things that you believe in and think are important uh, and see, um, see what we feel about them. You're often taken as a sort of symbol of rebellion uh, and mothers deplore uh, the influence of the Rolling Stones because they think that the Rolling Stones are rebellious. Uh, do you think that the society that you live in is one you ought to rebel against or do you think you're rebelling against it? Yes, definitely rebelling against it. I mean, not in the obvious way that uh, a newspaper or pop sort of headline would do it. But um, obviously we feel there are things wrong with society. And, but I, I haven't until very recently uh, been in, into this 
kind of discussion at all because I haven't really felt he's been my place or through, through my knowledge, which I don't think is, is enough. And to start sort of pontificating on these kind of subjects, I've tried to keep out of discussions on religion, such as some pop stars trying to, trying to set a good example to teenagers by being religious, where others will try and set an example like, by saying, you should take this kind of, you know, I've taken these drugs or these drugs. You know. We're trying to keep out of that. But one finds oneself, society, more or less, has pushed one into this position. You know, I never asked to be pushed into it. And uh, Lord Parker today said you have a great responsibility, a responsibility which has been so much pushed upon us, rather. You know, the influence that we have has been pushed upon us, especially during this drug thing, which one asked to make certain pronouncements on it where this is really, all this kind of thing, is really part of one's private life, you know? Before this, I didn't really want to talk about it. You know? One invariably gets drawn into controversy, Mr. Taker, doesn't one? What I'd like to ask you, really, is this. You appeal to millions of young people. Uh, you give them pleasure, they enjoy your art. How do you conceive yourself as an influence with them? What is... Uh, the word, a message is rather an overworked word, but in your personality, in your approach to music and rhythm and so on, what is the way in which you would like yourself to be understood amongst young people particularly? Well, I'm just in the very way that uh, I started myself which I was when I was quite young. Yes. Which was just to have as good a time as possible, which, which most young people do try and do without any regard to responsibilities of any sort, social, family or others, because they tend to have very few at that age. Do you think society today is more corrupt than it was, or do you think society is always loud and corrupt and we have a duty to rebel against it? Or? Yes, I think it's always, in, always been in need of uh, checking the corruption. As you, I don't think what kind of corruption they're talking about exactly here, but... But this is what I like to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Today, one's faced with a very different uh, situation than in past centuries, perhaps, because of communication. Because we nobody could have, none of us could have had the communication this in any other century that we have, instant communication, such as we're doing now. Mm. And this uh, influences far more people. And, and with, with a small, with the small education, even, that one is allowed today for freely, this also affects this, um, which makes this this generation and all these just post-war thing and the money and everything else very different to the others and also this generation has had no there was no america to go to in the, such as the last century if you really didn't like it here you could go to america you know, start afresh what are the qualities you think that your generation is, uh, is going to bring forward because quite soon after all it's going to be the dominant generation yes well this is the the, the, uh, the formulation of, of the I don't really want to formulate a new code of living or code of morals or anything like that. Or nor does, I don't think anyone of this generation wants to. One really has to see that that for the first thing is that the open rebellion, uh, not so much in this country, as in others such as America, which are the race riots. I mean, the race riots in America are not totally on race, you know. This, is, this uh, would include a large section of young people in America. These, these are people that are the worst ones, the worst treated. This is where it would start, here. But there are lots of other people, especially on the west coast of America, who disagree, but uh, perhaps don't, aren't as badly treated or are much better off. But there's a basic... Uh, thing between them all, not just, mm. it's not just the colour thing, it's against the whole system, which is, which, the system for those people which has done them no good at all, otherwise they wouldn't be looting and burning. Mm. Clearly, I mean, there are all kinds of sort of ugly and dangerous aspects to this, which you get into very rapidly. Yes. Uh, and this is the problem, isn't it, when you go for freedom, I mean, you are immediately up against what are the sort of definitions of freedom and limits of freedom. Yeah. Well, this has to be achieved. But, I mean, most of the, any leader of this kind of freedom movement have uh, been very negative in their approach, I think because, like Leary, 
because they felt it the, the logical first step to be negative. In other words, you know, drop out. I mean, but, you wouldn't really go with it, Tim. But I, don't, I wouldn't, uh, and I'm sure he wouldn't go, as, as to say that was the final answer. That's just his sort of start to it. And I think that, that negative start, very simple, one which everyone can understand, a start. I, I'm sure he wouldn't go to say that was the last word. But to formulate something new, I don't, I don't, uh, <laughs> haven't formulated anything. Yeah. Well, I think that very much. But you could only be against something in virtue, something more positive. You're against it because you reject it. But you reject it in terms of something which you believe in. Something else, yes. But there's the, the certain aspects of it which one doesn't perhaps mind so much. But uh, some of the things, it, it appears, both in America and Western Europe, that uh, freedom of the individual is being slowly curtailed. The freedom of this communication has become faster. The freedom of, of being in control or having anything to do with one of these forms of communication seems slowly to be disappearing. Once in this country, it seems to be working towards complete state monopoly of, of, of radio and television. Perhaps not controlled by the government, certainly, in some sort of... But isn't the problem today that the, as a result of largely of these communications, the quicker our freedoms touch other people's freedoms, our lives touch other people's lives, and therefore we are immediately, much more quickly, up against this question of the limits of freedom without, in fact, no, I don't creating think chaos or danger. No, I don't think it's going to, do, to do with it. I don't think individual freedom is affected by mass communication in that way at all. No, but I mean, I sympathize with you in the way in which this is clamped down on, and I would be very strong if the law, the function of the law, is precisely to protect freedom rather than prohibit and suppress freedom, and we're very quickly, I agree, getting into a position where the law is instinctively thought of as against freedom rather than for freedom. Well, it is. And I, I mean, it, it's a fallacious it. argument to say yeah. that the law is for, 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 for freedom, really. But then you would say especially in lots of, I mean, in, in cases against, in obvious cases against the uh, wrong, the individual wrong in society, such as hitting an old lady mm. over the head or something. This is obvious. Well, I mean, we, you would not dissent, would you, from the view that, after all, the law tries to intervene between people in order to protect their individual sphere of freedom. No, I, I say one, that... Protect one person doing harm to another, to, protect, protect, uh, to prevent one person trespassing on another's sphere of free action. Uh, do, uh, do you really... Is it really freedom that you would seek to promote, or a kind of, shall I say, intensity of living? I mean, you, you have a... Uh, the two are not very far apart, in a sense, are they? Uh, your appeal to the many people who enjoy your presence, is it really an appeal to develop themselves, to live fully, to live freely in that sense, without trespassing on other persons' freedom? And without yeah. doing harm they to other people. They should never trust us on other people's freedom. Yes, but the law changes, doesn't it? As it changes. Yes, it, but yes, it does change, it. but it takes all these things that we're, we're having to go through and all these other things to, to, to try and change it.